Hello, it is Sunday night. It is the Dr. It's actually not Sunday. It's Tuesday night. And it is the Dr. Boz channel. Welcome. Tonight, I want to talk about one of my favorite patients. His memory was failing, his glucose was out of control, and he was sick. Due to that chronic aging in his brain, uh, the brain took a serious hit and he didn't even know it. He wished he had known about the science of better brain health sooner. And we're going to talk about brains, aging, and what in the world ketones might have to do with it. I'm going to share a few stories from my day today because I got to embrace in one of my favorite things. And I think it is worth just sharing how much that can dramatically inspire even me after seeing it over and over and over again. Thanks for the thumbs up that you can see and hear me. That is always one of the most important parts of this show if you've been watching long enough. Uh, I am going to start with a couple things that are traditions here on the Dr. Boz show, and that's checking numbers. Um, we are going to talk about brains. We're going to tell a few stories. And if you have questions about brains and ketones, please type them in. I have some helpers. Some it's, it's, It is the season where maybe we could call them elves uh, in the background helping me out. Uh, sorting your questions and really shuffling them into a place where I can see them at the later part of the show. I will spend a pretty good amount of time answering questions because I think you're gonna, I think there's gonna be a few. All right, so this is the ketone check uh, with a purple strip. Again, Foracare being the trusty um, meter that is something I've been using for several years. In the month of December, if you're looking to invest in a meter, you get 25% off if you use BOZ25 this month. I'm gonna say I'm totally shocked these numbers are this good. I, I've, had a, I've had a totally down day. Um, it's my son's birthday and I woke up and I know it's his birthday, I've known it's his birthday, and I did not send him a card. <laughs> so I've had the guilt of mom all day and I did not fast yesterday. So usually I fast uh, starting on Sunday and I just didn't do it yesterday. I didn't. So today's been better, but it's only about a, I mean, I, don't, I think I might be 24 hours from the last bite of food and I could feel it. <laughs> so all right, so that's without ketones. One of the things I like to do on the show, and especially when I've had a tough day, is to drink some ketones. We will check those numbers. Make sure this is not the old coffee. Yes, it's the ketones. Uh, we are gonna check these numbers at the end because it does make a difference. And if you haven't uh, stuck around to see that, I really um, oh, cranked the volume, can't hear it. Gosh, I've been working on this too. So thank you for some feedback there. I'm gonna just lift that, um, lift that microphone a little bit higher, closer to my mouth here. Um, as I do look at one of, the, one of the questions typed in, it was somebody else asking, why don't other doctors follow the, what would be called the GKI, or um, on the Dr. Boz channel, we call it the Dr. Boz ratio. And the reason we call it that is because it does, um, yes, it does, I'm gonna just make one little, one little thing here. And then, don't give up on me here. I just need to do that little adjustment and I think it makes all the difference. Mainly because I know what's in there correctly. All right, so hopefully that sound is much better. And um, gosh, you know, the, the uh, question that the person typed in before the show, I, I've just, it's been running through my mind. Let me just take a moment to say, you know what? Uh, people don't check the Dr. Boz ratio because it's, it's like most things. Uh, when, you, uh, when you look at numbers, you have instant immediate feedback. And there are a lot of things that you have to do on the ketogenic diet that are different. And stepping over the threshold where you measure your numbers does not attract everyone. Um, someone was telling me that the profile of the people that watch my channel, um, they love analytics. They're very well known as, um, <laughs> as engineers. And I often think that the reason the, the GKI or the Dr. Boz ratio, which are measuring the same thing, is so popular on this channel is because the audience. They want data. I, I teach that that's how I follow my patients. That's how I follow myself. It's how I followed my mother. And that I don't want to wait for the lab to tell me the results in three months. I want my patients understanding where they're at sooner in the story. 
And uh, it must be true because this is where you check the ratios. This is where we check numbers. And I like to be able to predict what's going to happen uh, as quickly as we might know. And you can't do that without checking numbers. So every show begins with me checking numbers. Uh, it sure keeps me accountable for fasting and keeping my diet clean. Um, and uh, it's stories like I'm going to tell tonight that inspire me. Uh, to truly be um, on the path to the best health that I can, I can example for you and that I can teach through the courses, the books, and seeing patients. So before we hop over into that, though, I am going to do a quick book review. So if you'll notice here I've got Keto Continuum at the bottom because in the past I've reviewed books and you couldn't tell which one I was reviewing. But I want to say, Cheryl, on December 2nd, thank you for writing this review because it is the first review. Actually, November 30th wasn't too far before that, but what a great review um, from Cheryl where she says, I have type 2 diabetes and I have been grain and sugar free for almost two years. But despite this, my blood sugar never seemed to be under 100. I found this so frustrating and couldn't figure out why until I read Dr. Bosworth's book. Now I feel like I know what to do to get those numbers down. I have also signed up for the Keto Continuum course and I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like this is the last uh, piece of the puzzle for me to understand type 2 diabetes and putting it behind me. Yes, I have uh, another interview coming up tomorrow and we did a little prep work for the um, just saying, does everything connect? And he said, can you say that type 2 diabetes is reversible? And I don't know if he was asking if as a physician I could say that. I'm like, heck yes, I can say that it's reversible. It really is reversible. Uh, type 2 diabetes is an overabundance of carbohydrates for the way your insulin is working. So yes, we can give you more insulin. We can augment the way your insulin works. But more importantly, you can stop putting in so many carbohydrates and we can start to reverse those problems. Uh, I have lots of examples. One of the patients tonight that I'm going to talk about is one of those examples of reversing this type 2 diabetes. Um, the, the review on the, on the 30th is also very good. Five stars from uh, Sylvia saying, uh, best keto book ever. I love the step-by-step -step instructions. This makes this keto lifestyle easy to understand and the charts are extremely helpful. I highly recommend this book. And that one is actually the, um, the Keto Continuum book. Uh, the next one here is actually the workbook. And so Mary Byrne, thank you for writing your review. Five stars. You also wrote in on December 2nd saying, excellent guidance and place to track data in this workbook. Great companion to the Dr. Boz digital course as well as the Keto Continuum book. Dr. Boz is an excellent teacher and helps you avoid the symptoms associated with flipping that keto switch. Awesome guidebook. You know, this is what I use for my patients. I truly am thankful for... Uh, the patients that helped me hone in uh, which which charts would be the easiest for them to learn from. Uh, it, it doesn't matter that I could see their data. What was most important was that they could. That this book allows both of us to figure it out. Um, it, it truly is a gift that you don't need a physician to do the ketogenic diet, but you might need uh, some guidebook, uh, some guide rules there. Um, I, I'm sad to say that the Any Way You Can book... Um, despite it being the most popular of the books, uh, it hasn't had a review since November 16th. So we'll just say I, I, I had my birthday last week. If you want to get me the best birthday gift, it's write a review of the book. Uh, that is my favorite thing. So thank you for doing that. Um, we are going to uh, go back to this book, to go back to the scene and say, all right, I'm going to tell a couple of stories. Um, we're going to start with a story that I know quite well, which is the, what the introduction was about. And, and then I'm going to talk about what I learned, a story I, I, I've heard the first part of today and why I was going to review a paper tonight. I'm putting that off till next week because I really want this story to get to the minds and hearts of people that need to hear it. Um, and I think through stories are where my heart continues to be in the in the messiness of medicine. Uh, medical practice can uh, be re super rewarding, of course, but it also is filled with stories that you don't know how they're gonna turn out. I do my best to find uh, the connection of patients and medicine and education and blend them into a moment. 
but um, many of you that follow the Dr. Boz channel, if you're inside the, the Neurons group, you know of one of your heroes is Patrick B. I was actually looking for his, um, his initial picture, but I'm kind of glad I didn't find it. Uh, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. He looks so sick in this picture. He is in the ICU bed. It is um, about uh, a few, maybe a, a few days. It might be in that hospital visit that he learns about something called a ketogenic diet. Um, he's in the hospital bed because his diabetes has wreaked havoc on his body. The things he knows about are the things his doctor writes prescriptions for. So those will include his blood sugars. They're not controlled. Um, they include medication that will help his newly found kidney stone uh, reduce the pain. Um, he, is, uh, he doesn't know about several of his medical problems. He had blood pressure medicines. He, had, uh, he knew about that one. Um, he knew about gout, he knew about, um, or not gout, but kidney stones, um, and he knew that he was horribly overweight. Um, Patrick is also one of my engineers, <laughs> so he loves the formula for calculating and being very mindful about how, how sharp his brain has been in the world of numbers and performance, and he knows that that is long gone. That is a disappearing act that continues to remove function from his brain year after year. And I don't know him at this time, but I do get, have the privilege of seeing this picture in, um, in the past uh, where it had been months since um, I'd been taking care of him or helping him. And he shared this picture of when he was in the ICU bed. What Patrick doesn't know about when, um, when I see a picture like that and I can, you can instantly see there's got to be some sleep apnea going on, meaning low oxygen at night. Um, there's got to be troubles that that obesity has caused inside his body. And the most motivating part for me is his brain. Uh, of course, um, being an engineer, I, I have very little appreciation at this stage of the story for how much he values the sharpness of his brain. And that may sound glib, like, well, doesn't everybody value a sharp brain? Uh, there are there is a particular subset of patient <laughs> and they may be my data loving <laughs> finger poking uh, calculating gki dr boss ratio p patients out there um because they are they are adamant about um, how do i calculate my way to an improved health and um what what patrick might not have realized at the time but definitely does now is how dangerous uh, dangerously close he was to a life spent with memory problems. Um, when you can watch a brain and body uh, decline, uh, it looks like putting on extra weight. It looks like a high blood pressure medications that start to come along. And at first it's just a little one and then they raise it a little bit more. And then their mood just isn't as stable. Um, speaking of mood, I'm going to have a little drink. This is not Starbucks. It's my ketones. But it's the only, <clears throat> it was the cup that I had sitting next to me, so I mixed it right before the show. Um, as, as Patrick's health, uh, it didn't get bad overnight, and neither did his brain function fail him overnight. What did affect him was that he knew that he was, I don't know if he used this word or I have this from, from my own history, is that he was addicted to the doctor. He didn't like going to the doctor, but he could not afford to not go to the doctor. Uh, between the blood pressure medicines, the diabetes medicines, and now he just added another doctor because he had kidney stones. And uh, the kidney stones are probably a better representation for the crystallization that was happening inside his brain. And as Patrick uh, began to um, enter into a state of ketosis and then get some of the weight loss off, uh, get, get some of the medications for stabilizing his sugar off. What he's been able to do is calculate his way back to a body and a brain that is at least 15 years younger and a, a lease on life that is no longer addicted to the doctor. And as if he continues with the amount of health improvements that he's had, um, I, I could, I could postulate a, a, a funeral that um, the day before he was living one his best life. Uh, what Patrick has shared with me over several visits is how much 
uh, he missed out on the crispness of his memory. And as the, uh, as the brain aged, much like those kidney stones added one little crystal at a time to be attracted to the debris, to the waste that was in his kidney that should have been flushed out, that should have never stayed in his kidney. But just like that kidney stone grows one crystal at a, at a time, that was what was happening in his brain. And his sharp engineering brain started with um, all of the smarty pants that anybody who knows an engineer that you're like, yep, that's just how they think and talk and that's how they get obsessed with things that the, the rest of us don't all, I, I, I'm not an engineer, but I can relate that I really do like the numbers. Uh, and as he reversed the uh, carbohydrates in his diet, the weight came off. But what's been most valuable to Patrick is how uh, he described one day that uh, the colors in his life that had been muted. And you'll, you'll hear that this can be described as a, depress a depressed brain. They just, everything seems gray. They can't seem to find the colors in their life. He's like, it's like there was a film on my life and the colors were brighter. The sounds were, were more amazing. I could find memories that I didn't have before. And as, I, uh, as, I, as he reflected over the time it took to do that, it was at the time when um, we could say that those kidney stones were no longer in his kidney. The crystals have been removed because of a constant, stable, steady improvement in his ketone numbers, in his blood sugars, uh, in his Dr. Boz ratio, and the other metrics that I ask him to follow. Um, so I share that story, and then I'm gonna share a parallel story, and then maybe, maybe I'll share a story about my son. I, I haven't, I'm not sure if I should do that. Okay, so, um, the second story comes from today. So Patrick's story, I had been um, contemplating. We share the same birthday, so I was thinking about Patrick and really just pray, pray, praying and thankfulness for our friendship and the relationship of being someone who's guided his health to improvement. Um, and today, I met with the new class. Actually, we met with the old class and the new class for the brains course. And I introduced the classmates uh, to say the two, two classes are here together on a Zoom call to do one of the things that I love to do the most. But I, what I wanted and what was able to happen was a few students from the first class, which happened in April this year, so about seven months ago, um, they shared um, how they've used the course and what has happened to their brain. Uh, and how they're sharing that course with either family or the organizations they work for or uh, educating clients through their, their business by using that online course to teach about how brains improve. And there's some really inspiring stories there. Some of them I've told uh, in, in the past, but there was a new man today that um, totally grabbed my heart when he talked about uh, his brain. So we got done with the first class. The second class um, was then asked to uh, introduce themselves and say, why did, you, why did you sign up for the course? Uh, knowing that it's expensive, I, I, had, I had said earlier that you don't sign up for this course without, with a whimsical attention to your brain. Some things either happen to it, to your brain, or someone you love. And what I hope to do in that course is to improve them, improve their brains, assess their brains, and then empower them to share that course with, with the people they love, the people that they minister to or are in relationship with, or the people that they educate. Uh, so I had this couple um, on the, the um, course today, uh, or on the Zoom today, who said, I bought this course because I wonder if um, a ketogenic diet or if anything that you might be able to share will be able to help my husband with Parkinson's. And um, I think why it took me back so strikingly was because this was my first love in brain health. Um, although I studied uh, sleep uh, and the insomnia um, uh, process and why that is so critical to either retrain a brain or make sure that a brain is getting adequate sleep. Um, uh, shortly after I entered into the world of private practice and 
Uh, unlike what I was planning on, I was planning on staying in an ICU and being a pulmonary care, critical care physician. Uh, and then I had a baby <laughs> and said, well, for heaven's sakes, who's going to raise the baby? Uh, so I entered into the world of pri uh, primary care, internal medicine outpatient. Um, but I was hungry for some, the analytics side of uh, what, what I was missing out in that, in that ICU. And I was asked to be part of a team that was studying Parkinson's disease um, in a trial. And my job on the, on the team was very little, but it was to be the outpatient physician and measure some of those disorders uh, or some of the dysfunction that comes with Parkinson's disease. So um, in the chat, I, I just uh, as a way for me to understand the audience, I'm kind of watching the chat over here, even though it's not on the live. I would like you to, to enter in if you know if you know zero people with Parkinson's, one person with Parkinson's, or two person. I, I I hope you don't know more than two two people with Parkinson's. Um, and the reason I want that is I, part of it is for me to look at this, but part of this part of it is for you to see how common this problem is, and people don't talk about it. Um, so as I uh, um, entered into this study, I had a few patients with Parkinson's, I was taking over someone's practice, but what was coming in was the, um, I was getting referred people who were in the study, so they had a little bit of Parkinson's and some had serious amounts of Parkinson's. And um, one of my first jobs as a young lady was that I was the nurse's assistant in a nursing home. And if you look at the, um, the profile of people in a nursing home, I didn't have a name for what that what was wrong with these patients, but I absolutely had um, uh, a respect for whatever happens is happening to them. I never want to happen to me. Uh, so take a look at that. Um, I'm just going to hop over there and show you the chat really quick because look at that those responses of all of the people that have had Parkinson's. Um, they've you know, either they've had two or one or a, ser a very close relative have Parkinson's. Um, and uh, th that's, that's, that's remarkable because if when I first uh, started collecting uh, patients in my practice with, that had Parkinson's, they were part of the study. I'm going to go back to this view. And as, as they entered the study, some of them, again, just had very, I mean, I don't know how the physicians diagnosed the Parkinson's. Uh, as as um, early in the disorder as they did. Through the years, 20 years in, I can spot it a lot better, so probably they'd practiced a lot longer than I had at the time, but I was very impressed that I was getting patients whose brains were clearly um, at the early stage of this Parkinsonian problem. So the patients would come in, and my job was to rank their symptoms and then follow them. So for the next several years, I think it was seven years before I left that practice and moved uh, out of Utah, I got to watch people age with Parkinson's disease. And in the back of my mind, this job that was in um, my, first <laughs> my first entrance off of the farm and into uh, somewhat of medicine was to be a nurse's assistant and how I never wanted to have what was happening to a Parkinsonian disorder. Uh, during this time, uh, being part of the study, I I found it necessary to read up on Parkinson's and how could you prevent it. And I was horrified that some of the, um, some of the best prevention for Parkinson's disease was to never be overweight, never have high blood pressure, never have sleep apnea, uh, never drink alcohol, um, never have a concussion. Uh, and, and what I'm collecting there are several of these dis, these check boxes saying, how can you predict if you're going to get Parkinson's disease? And essentially, it was anybody who was aging their brain who didn't live in a bubble. Uh, I mean, they had had something go wrong, and um, it wasn't even a lot of problems. At this point, in my practice, I couldn't find you one person who wasn't overweight, had high blood pressure, had cholesterol problems, had, had a heart attack. Um, like their brain was the last thing I was worrying about. I was trying to get all of these other medical problems um, controlled. So as I uh, am hearing this statement today from a wife and her husband, uh, she says, you know, when you're married for this many years, and they were in their 70s, um, you're, uh, you don't 
have a spouse that gets Parkinson's disease, you get Parkinson's disease together. And um, ooh, I'm gonna uh, catch my emotion. They entered into the Dr. Boz uh, uh, workshop today in hopes to find a way to slow down that Parkinsonian disease. And I instantly knew that this was, at, I, I knew at that point I needed to change the show for tonight to say this out loud. Uh, the only way they have a chance of slowing down that Parkinsonian disorder is to make th their brain look like Patrick's brain. That Patrick's brain, I don't know if I could say it was headed for Parkinson's, but he had every risk factor to get Parkinsonian disease. Uh, he, he had the chronic in, uh, high blood sugar. He was overweight. His inflammatory markers were so high, he was making kidney stones. Uh, and he wasn't doing it for six months. He'd been doing it for a couple of decades. Uh, you get to know Patrick, and he rides this really cool Harley Davidson motorcycle. Um, but he had a really difficult uh, transition from his teenage years into his, what I like to call his mature adult years. Uh, which is the day his daughter was born. And the day his daughter was born, he stopped doing several other things that no doubt hurt his brain. He stopped drinking alcohol. He stopped uh, staying up all night. Uh, he stopped partying with his friends that were also doing those behaviors. And he, he remarked that there are several people in his journey that said, if you're not going to do those things with me, I'm not going to be your friend. And... Um, as a true dad in love with his daughter chose, he says, I choose her. And even though his body got um, several health problems from that point forward, um, he's lying in this hospital bed in what I recall in my mind, and I'm sorry if the date's off a little, Patrick, 2015, 2016, um, where you're lying in that hospital bed with several medical problems that even though he wasn't drinking alcohol anymore and he wasn't staying up all night, he had high blood sugars, he had diabetes, he had um, high blood pressure, he had sleep apnea even if he doesn't admit to being <laughs> having sleep apnea. He was suffering what an obese body will cause uh, inside his brain. And the check marks for increasing his risk of Parkinson's were, the whole list is marked, um, he had them all. And when I did this prep interview for the recording I'm going to do tomorrow, and the man asked me, can you say, can you say that type 2 diabetes is reversible? Um, what I take great pride in saying is not only is type 2 di diabetes reversible, Patrick in five years has taken the risk of his Parkinson's disease from almost certainty. And if it wasn't Parkinson's, it would be a memory problem that he was going to have. He was going to die with the day before his funeral on the path he was on the day the picture was taken in his ICU was going to have one of those patients in my nursing home years that I, I hate to say this but it's real that patients don't visit anymore. Their brain doesn't work. The family checks in just enough to they can't some of them cannot handle it. It is up to the staff that's in those nursing homes to love on those people to pray about those people and the family just doesn't visit very often. And I say that from personal experience, knowing that it is very difficult to watch them die of a brain that doesn't work. And I, um, I really um, wish I could put in a bottle the motivation it takes to change the trajectory like Patrick did. Um, I could feel that the two that were in that uh, Zoom call today when they said, we're 76, I don't know if there's any time left. He's got Parkinson's disease already and we are on medication. Can you, f can you give us any hope? And I'm here to say, absolutely, we can give hope. One of the worst parts about that disorder um, and that time where I was studying the trial is I knew nothing about how powerful a, of an anti-inflammatory process a ketogenic state was. But I was trying to use every medication possible to reverse the inflammation on the inside of brain cells. And I was failing. No, everybody got worse. Everybody's blood pressure took more meds the next year, more meds the next year, more meds the next year. Um, everybody's, uh, nobody's diabetes got better. There was no such thing. If, if that man prepping for my interview tomorrow would have asked me, can you say that type 2 of diabetes is reversible? 
If I asked my younger self that, it would have been like, nope, that's not possible. There's no such thing as that. They all get worse. They all take more medication. Eventually, they all end up on insulin. There was just no hope. And as I looked at that couple today, which they also were emotional when they presented this, which maybe is what hit me so hard to say, um, this brains course that I offer, I know that the uh, that the uh, marketing team closed the the course yesterday, but I made sure to leave it open uh, today and tomorrow. That anybody who wants to join this course, what I pray this family does, is watch these videos and share every one of those videos that talks about the health of their brain with their kids, with their grandkids, with their neighbors, with I don't know the police department down the street. Uh, and the reason for that is they are in their 70s. They have been, they have been christened. I don't know if think that I think that's too positive of a, of a word. They have been cursed with the diagnosis of diabetes in their marriage. No, excuse me, cursed with the diagnosis of Parkinson's in their marriage. And the way out um, may be slow and steady. Uh, what I hope to teach them in this course is how to slow the disease and how to absolutely reverse the inflammation in their brain, pulling on the autophagy to not add any further crystals. Uh, it's really proteins in the brain, aging of the brain that will most certainly happen um, without, with, without some of the lessons that are going to come in this next, in this brains course. The, the brains course has like 15 minutes of ketones <laughs> and I used to teach brains and then try to get patients to do ketosis now I teach ketosis and then say if you really want to heal your brain once you figured out ketones let me show you how to repair a brain that's been broken from something like Parkinson's and um, I, I am going to share a story about why why this touched me. Today is my son's birthday, as you heard on that opening. He, um, he, he had his birthday without his mother sending him a card or a gift. He's gonna be home next week and he was just here last week, but it's still no excuse. I, I felt I, I might cry just sharing with you that as a mom, I messed that up today. I did not get him, uh, I just can't believe I did this, but, but I'm, on, I'm trying to give myself grace and forgiveness for many of the things I've done right. And as I did that, um, I, I recalled a text from one of my sons who there, these two sons are in college. The, the third son is here at our house, uh, still in high school. But as, um, I sent my kids off into this big, bad world of, of, of life, um, they entered into college. And, um, as a mom, you pray that the sex, drugs, rock and roll that everybody seems to experiment with is either brief or doesn't end up in a car accident or is enough to them to realize that's not the path they would want. Um, and I get this text um, from my son who is in college and says, Mom, I, I chose not to drink. And I, I, I can barely say this without crying. Uh, I know he chose not to drink because I forced him to go to this brains course and flip the slides for me. Now, I didn't need any help flipping the slides. I was trying to get him to listen to what it is that I know that those people in that nursing home didn't know. If they knew that was going to happen to their brain, they would have done the things that, that reverse it, that this couple just entered into this brains course to say, how do I undo this? Is there a chance I can undo this? And I know that the only chance they have is if they follow several of these things that we'll go through together in this course. But as I as I um, get this text from a, you know, a young man trying to you know, fit in and find friends and do the things that young men do, um, he says, I chose not to drink. And the first few weeks of college, that was weird because everybody was drinking and smoking marijuana and doing the things that I don't want to do. But two weeks ago, it was actually the week before Thanksgiving, one of his drinking buddy or you know, his friends that drinks um, says, why don't you drink alcohol? He goes, Mom, I really wanted to share the brain slides that you had, you made us look at for you for several of those years. But I answered in a very analytical and practical way that 
the time it takes you to drink and recover from drinking is at least a part-time job. And right now, that's that would decrease my performance at college by, and he had a percentage of a grade point that he was going to drop. And of course, as a mom, I don't know that they'll make that choice forever, but I am so thankful that whatever their brains are going through, the growth and the challenges and the stress and uh, the world in a college dorm, a college um, life, isn't being added the traumatic processes that I teach in this course. And if if one more teenager can hear that before they enter college, then all of this effort of coordinating an online course and doing a good job is worth it. Uh, if if one grandparent watches this that course and sits their kid that sits their grandkids down at Christmas time and says, "I want you to learn about this thing called the hippocampus," <laughs> it's a really good module that I've made my kids do several times. Uh, that if they can do the little puzzle that I, t I, I show them about how is, how is smoking marijuana like a concussion? And the parallels, that every kid today knows about concussions. They have not got a clue about what it does long-term to their brains, especially a growing brain. And I don't care if the doctor prescribes it or not. What I teach in that course is the, and that's it's why I don't want the casual person in that class. I want somebody who truly wants to know the process of how a brain ages and why the best quality of life starts with the brain cells that Patrick was sacrificing every day on the day that photo was taken. He is now, I don't know, five years into knowing me and working with me uh, and I, I'd love to see a brain biopsy but not, not yet Patrick to know there's a really good chance that as well as he has managed his health since learning the ketogenic diet and then applying those lessons in uh, the brains course that he has a new lease on life that he's as lucky as my kid for having the information in time to reverse it so that wasn't the study that I was going to do tonight but I hope you can connect with why it was so important for me to say I'm doing this brain course again we did a, a brief introduction video today. Next week is when we start going through cases. Uh, the course will stay open for another 24 hours. Let me quick show you that, and then I'm going to get to your questions. Um, if we go to, uh, hold on here. Let's go to, there we go. So, uh, and we are going to change this to, Okay, so here on the website, bosmd.com is what this is where you go to type this in. Um, and then you see that buy online course, oopsie here. You see that buy online course there? You can click there. And then what I'll show you is that the course is still open. Um, so unlike the consistently keto course, uh, this is, uh, it's a pretty penny. But what I hope you do is I hope you either share the cost with people that want to watch it with you or that you find a way that you replay this uh, course um, and charge people to be in it. Um, the course, I have several students who, I don't know, I think they charge 100 bucks, maybe 150 bucks to take the course with them. And they do something that I have been absolutely adamant that um, patients do, which is don't keep this information to yourself. That my, my family and my son uh, and the Parkinson's patients that are going to learn this in the next 48 hours, or they're going to start in the next next little few days here. These 12, these four to five weeks that we'll work together, um, they will have access to that video, those videos, and to continue to work on uh, reversing the damage that their Parkinson's brain is displaying. And I don't know how their story is going to turn out, but I'm going to do my part. I'm going to teach them, I'm going to pour into them, and I am going to help them help the next generation. Because if it is too late, if, if we can't reverse their, their Parkinson's or we can't hold it where it's at so they get to have the day before that funeral is still a high quality, memory recording, engaged day, and not those lonesome Parkinson's patients that are in nursing homes for years before they die, then they win. I win. 
Oh, I can't believe I made it through that without crying because that is super emotional for me. Um, all right, I'm going to go to your questions. Uh, so we have a couple folks that uh, wrote questions in right at the beginning that I had Angela, I had my team um, uh, put in here for me. So I'm going to uh, read this out loud. Oh, I just need to make that a little smaller here. Not down there, where are you? There we go. The reason I am writing is that I've been diagnosed with RBD or REM sleep behavior disorder. And I am in the thrashing stage now for the past two years. My doctors tell me that there is an 80% chance it will progress to Lewy body dementia or Parkinson's disease, dementia, within the next few years. I've also been told there is nothing I can really do to help my brain and prevent the progress of the disease. I've read everything I can to help inform myself in a proactive approach, but I feel like I need a very specific plan to follow. Would your course help me? Oh my goodness, would my course help you? Help you? Um, not only does the course uh, have the, I'm gonna take this back so you can see me a little better. Not only does that course have step-by-step -step processes for how to improve and why. Like, one of the best places that being in practice this long and having really honed this course. This is my favorite thing that I do. I mean, I know most of you know me for keto, but it is nothing compared to what my passion is about repairing brains. And when I look at uh, the steps that I put into the Keto Continuum workbook, um, it is because when that uh, course is, um, uh, when that, when people go into the brains course, if, if they make the changes that I push them to make, like how do we get that brain to do the dishwasher effect better every night? Um, you can think of autophagy as the process where they kind of, the body really recycles the proteins, those extra crusty proteins that should not be lying around the brain. Uh, autophagy is, is the process of recycling that. But before they ever get crusty, every night when you sleep, it should wash the brain. Well, how do you do that? How do you know if you're doing that? That's what this course teaches. And I have a way, because I love the analytics, I have a way for you to measure that. And if you aren't getting there, then you have to practice doing some things with your brain that don't take a prescription. They take a process where you can see the feedback saying, no, 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 even if you've never done this before and you now have the prediction that the tunnel is only going to get smaller, that you're going to have one of these disorders, which I don't doubt that her doctor said that. I've said that. And before the, the, the specialty of really honing a skill to reverse brain disorders, um, I believed it. I believed there was nothing possible that could reverse the, the damage found in a brain. So uh, to answer your question, even if you never take the brain course, you should get the workbook and you should do what Patrick V did, which is follow this workbook, plot out what you're doing, measure what you're doing, and take your brain back into the anti-inflammatory state. Uh, what you'll see is all the things I ask you to do in that course are way easier when they're in a state of ketosis. When ketones don't circulate, it's much harder to do that. Mm. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, all right, that was a great question, by the way. Thank you for writing it in. Um, here we go. Okay, so my husband is, uh, my husband's problem is a brain bleed stroke which triggered seizures. Very good question here. Um, we don't know if these are the only problem causing his cognitive decline or if the medication is contributing. He's almost 73, and the stroke was in March of 2019. He seemed to recover almost miraculously from that, but not completely. His computer skills went from barely teachable to not being able to remember most computer things. Uh, his speech was clear, uh, but he had aphasia. He couldn't remember. Um, he couldn't articulate it either. Still has trouble putting, push, pulling the words out. He seems to have the most problem with what I think of as sequencing things like making a sandwich. The neurologist and other doctors talk about this like it's the new normal. My husband is 
old school and resistant to anything new. I need to understand the possibility of your course. So the first thing I would do um, is there is a book by Norm, Norman Doidges, D-O-I-D-G-E-S, Norman Doidges. And he's amazing. So what one of my inspiring teachers was this, uh, this I think he's a psychiatrist and a neurologist, Norman Doidges. Um, and he tells stories about patients' brains who are as bad as your husband's or worse. And I use some of um, some of parallel stories in that in the brains course to teach you what is he doing to his patients. Now he's using some other fancy things and that are really you know cutting edge technology. Um, but one of the most important parts about um, uh, the brains course is there are ten modules. Uh, let's see if I can actually go to that. I'm going to go to um, here. Here. Um, okay, hold on. Let's go to here. I need to show you something. Okay, so this is, it says that, the, that it's closed, but it's not closed just yet. Uh, I want to show you this part. Um, these are several of the problems that I talk about, uh, looking at prescription meds, malnourishment, iron, but here's the part where when I took uh, several of the things I learned from Norman Doidges and the amazing stories he talks about brains that 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 repair, I have them too. But he wrote them so much better. So if you if you like audiobook, his audiobook is awesome. I think I've listened to it like five times. Whenever I start to wonder, gosh, can can I can I keep expecting even better improvements? And then I'll listen to the, the stories out of his book, and I'm back on I'm back inspired again. So the modules start with slate, start with slow wave sleep, and if you haven't seen my lecture uh, on sleep, it's the oldest video <laughs> on YouTube. So type in Dr. Bosworth and sleep, and it's this really old video that, um, gosh, my my kids, some of them weren't even in school yet, so it's it's quite a few years old. Uh, in fact, the boy who is uh, who said no to alcohol, he was the one that I talk about in the first grade where. Um, or he was in kindergarten. No, oh, he was in first grade. And he comes home and says, Mom, we need to talk. I have pulled everyone in the kindergarten class and the first grade, and I have to go to bed the earliest. This needs to change. <laughs> God, I love that kid. Uh, uh, that did not change. I said, I'm your mother. This is, the, this is what the slot in life you got, and your bedtime will remain the same because I care about your brain. <laughs> that was the first of these issues. But I talk about that in there. I tell those stories in there. And I show you what it is that you need to accomplish and how some of the ways I do it. The other thing that comes with the person who buys the course is I do an evaluation of, I do an assessment of your brain. And then during the class, I give you a chance to um, be interviewed, uh, to ask me questions, uh, to ask follow-up questions. So the second thing we do, I think I, I do this a little bit better. Yeah, so the first one's slow wave sleep, and it looks at, um, how brain is looked at, what happens with antidepressants, d the dementia and memory loss, that's all just module one. Uh, module two is BDNF and what causes it to go down, what makes it rise, and I would love to tell you that it's an easy answer. It's not, it's not as easy as you think. The next one we talk about, this is the place where I tinily touch on uh, ketones. <laughs> Uh, so obesity, mindful meditation, how to fuel your brain, that's where the ketones come in. Um, this is that part where I start to assess them. This is my favorite one for teenagers, which is the hippocampus. Uh, and this is the one where if I was running Christmas <laughs> and I had teenagers that hadn't seen it, I would totally make them sit there and do this. Um, that um, The next one is brains and trauma. This is a great one. If you ever have to do a... Um, um, junior achievement is that right? Where they where the people from the outside world come into a uh, the schools and they talk about what things they do at their job. Uh, this workshop, this little thing, which is about eight minutes long, I think every executive who runs a company should just stop talking about their company and talk about the the trauma and the cell damage. It's the greatest little discussion. Anyway, module six is that. Um, module 7 is alcohol, module 8 is fetal alcohol syndrome, module 9 is mar marijuana. Um, I do talk about THC, CBD, very powerful one. Prescription drugs is module 10, and my favorite one is the 11th one where I 
after I teach all this, I make you use it. And I say, hey, um, if you were the mayor of your town, and part of what got me so passionate about this was I was trying to see patients in a jail and the policies in the city were sabotaging any benefit we could give these people because they didn't realize how brains heal. And so I make them write the policies, the top three policies that they would Im implement if they were on the city council. So it is truly my prayer that enough people on the city council <laughs> boards watch this course or at least somebody shows them this course and says, for heaven's sakes, their policies for repairing brains are not political. They are absolutely based in evidence-based science, and they don't require a doctor, but they do require education. And as much as I have guilt over not, um, not getting my son, I did talk to him today. I did wish him a happy birthday, but he did not get a present for me. And my mother would be, she would be like, Annette. Uh, all right, so we're going to do one more. Um, let me see if I can do one more question, and then we'll check my numbers and, and call it good. Um, uh, oh, guess what? Oh, we got to do this one. My favorite patient wrote in a question. He totally wins. I get to do this. Okay, so uh, Patrick V, he says, thanks, Dr. Boz. You're my favorite, too. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. Can you break down BDNF? and how we get more of it. It is probably one of my favorite parts of the, of the um, workshop is that BDNF and its, um, its impact on, uh, on brains and how they repair, it, it really is well studied. Uh, I talk about in the course that when I was in medical school, if you said, if you dye your hair purple, does it increase BDNF? If that was your hypothesis for a research study, because the letters BDNF were in the proposal, you probably would have got funding. <laughs> it was that much of a hot topic research. Um, knowing that BDNF is a protein within the brain that measures, it measures health, it measures brain health. And um, we also know that it measures the restoration of atrophied cells in the brain. We know that it parallels the the dishwasher effect that's happening at night. And when BDNF, uh, you, it's not a genetic thing, uh, you actually can, the, the, the highest boost of it is after electric shock therapy, which is not something I recommend. Uh, but the research on that shows absolutely, if you're low on BDNF and you need to have a boost of it by tomorrow, you sign this piece of paper because the ECT will can reverse your memory and take it away and sometimes they don't get it back. But by golly, it will raise BDNF significantly um, by getting a shock of electricity. So I don't recommend that. The course doesn't teach you to go get ECT. But I think the teachable moment that says, yes, we have the research on it. Um, other things are um, breaking a sweat and holding a sweat. Um, another thing that we really uh, put a lot of time and effort on in this channel is how can you stress those mitochondria? Uh, sweating is a measurement of stressing the mitochondria. I have people. You know, I, I measure jump rope and say, this is jumping one inch off the ground. Unless you've got a broken leg or ankle, uh, you can't do that. Or you, you, you can't tell me that jumping one inch off the ground, two feet, is beyond you. And I've had people with knee replacements and hip replacements uh, tell me they couldn't do it. And then I proceeded to show them, yes, you can. Um, quit telling yourself you can't. Uh, that's one of the major lessons from the Norman Deutsch's um, book is you must be in a, a support group or you must be in a, a support sphere uh, that encourages you, that quits telling you what you can't, aren't capable of, uh, that quits telling patients you've got Parkinson's-like disorder, you're headed for dementia, there's nothing you can do about it. That's first of all not true. The second thing though is quit doing that, quit destroying their hope of there are several steps that you can do to improve that. Um, so other things about BDNF, so breaking a sweat, the, the jump rope effect is one of the ones I do. Meditating, uh, so there's no, there's no uh, um, sweating when you meditate, uh, so it shouldn't be, um, but by golly, can you improve brain function when you meditate and it correlates to improvements of the way you produce BDNF. 
So Patrick, you knew that was a hot button of mine. You knew I was going to love that question. <laughs> the answers are much better explained in the course, and I do a lot better job of, um, if you ever want to see a place where I, I probably spent four months of my life collecting the bibliographies for each of those modules, it's inside that course. And it is, oh my gosh, it took me way too long. Um, but there's just that much research out there. So I am going to uh, go back over to the chat, watch what you guys are saying again, uh, check my numbers, and call it a night. Um, I do wish my son officially a happy birthday on the channel. They never watch this, so <laughs> I don't have any risk of worrying about that. Um, but I do also say thank you for tuning in. We're going to check my numbers. And I do have that uh, sleep video uh, that is online that I will – if you're watching this in replay, I will put that at the end of the – um, at the end of the um, uh, video here, and you can click on that. So let's see, did my numbers go up or did they stay the same? Um, again, this is a three three sixty nine. Or not that, that's not what the, that's just the code that marks for this particular ketone strip. Mm. So. So yeah, 1.1. I actually think that 1.5 was not real. <laughs> so I'll check. I'll check it one more time just to see if it's if it is that high. But I'm usually pretty good at predicting when my ketones are up, and 1.5 felt way too high. Like it cannot be that good. I have not been that good. <laughs> I know what happens when I haven't worked out and I haven't fasted for at least 24 hours. That I should have checked it when I thought it was. I was pretty proud that it was that good when it shouldn't be though. So I didn't want to check it again. Um, let's look at it one more time, just with another strip. Mm. Uh, I can't remember what the glucose was at the beginning either. So ketones are probably a little nerve wracking. 1.5. Uh, so essentially unchanged or at least um, the minimally changed. I do feel better though. I'll tell you that even when I am not, uh, I'm not. The ketones don't look that much different, but I can tell you by drinking those ketones, I feel my mood lift. So when I look at the best part about brains, not only does it improve your sleep and improve the way you think, but when you're having a tough day. Um, boy, I choose those. All right, folks, we are going to see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to be part of the course, I've left it open for the next 24 hours. Join me. It is, you will not regret that. Uh, we'll, put the, we'll put the link in the show notes. We'll also um, welcome you into our community if you choose to join us. Good night, everybody. I am the Dr. Boz Show, reversing those medical problems.